every single year apple always has a little slide that shows some features that they just did not have time to talk about well i got time today let's get it Yo, 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 it's your boy Jay Dunn. You should already know by now. Welcome to Getting Things Done. So after the public facing keynote, what happens is Apple does a platform state of the union where they actually talk to the developers about the APIs and changes that they're gonna make that are not as many public facing features, but things that are gonna be coming down the pipeline for Apple. Well, normally in that little secret sauce of the state of the union, there's some really cool tidbits. So let's go over those right now. So if you haven't noticed, I'm a little bit of a nerd and nerds like to game, right? So one of the first hidden features I wanna talk about is the new APIs that are gonna allow for better gaming experiences on the iPad and iOS devices. One of those things is virtual game console controllers. And what that's gonna allow is touchscreen game controllers that look sort of like Xbox or PlayStation, where you can actually control your games via touchscreen with real buttons, well, virtual buttons, so that more games that really take controller uh, approaches, like a Tekken or like a true NBA 2K type game, you won't have to use like regular touchscreen controls. They'll have more of a virtual game controller look. So that's really cool. Another really cool game controller secret that's gonna be happening with the new update coming with iOS and iPadOS 15 is adaptive triggers with the DualSense controller, which means this little baby here is gonna be able to use the actual PlayStation only at the moment uh, adaptive triggers to be able to do a lot more haptic feedback and a lot more really cool gestures with just a controller. Gaming with this controller is gonna be huge. Now here's a welcome one for number two, landscape iOS apps on the iPad. So because of iPad OS 15, you will now be able to use the Instagram app in landscape. Now, of course, it's still gonna be portrait within the middle of the screen. It's not gonna fill up the entire screen as landscape, but now apps that are actually landscape only or could be need to be landscape because the portrait screen is sideways and you have to hold the iPad a certain way to view it, you'll actually be able to use those apps actually in the proper way with the best real estate on the iPad. That's really cool. So here's a really cool hidden feature with iPadOS that I think is gonna change the game. Now with the new focus mode, you have multiple instances of the same app can be on your home screen. So for instance, let's say my focus mode right now is gaming. I may have Twitter, Facebook be on my gaming uh, focus home screen so that when I hit the gaming focus, it's gonna just take away all the other apps except for the apps that I choose that I want during that focus mode. But when I'm back into my work mode, but I still wanna have access to social media, I can have those home pages also have the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram icons. That's really cool. And I think it's gonna open up the door for a lot of creativity on how we use our iPads for different modes and different times we use our iPads during the day. So for the fourth hidden feature, I wanna talk about keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts are getting a major overhaul in iPad OS 15. It's gonna allow us to actually use our keyboard to activate and do more straight from the keyboard. So instead of having to touch all the time, especially if you got the magic keyboard, you shouldn't even have to touch the screen much anymore when these new keyboard shortcuts and this overhaul goes into these apps. You can always bring it up with a handy gesture. I believe it's command, something's gonna come on the screen. Uh, but after you do that, you'll actually be able to see every type of shortcut that's in iPad apps, and you'll be able to use those with iPad OS 15. And I believe a lot of, uh, of the developers are gonna have a really good time enrolling and kind of adding new functionality to their applications because of this. Now here was a demo I saw during the Platform State of the Union that I thought was really cool that there wasn't really talked about a lot in the actual keynote. And this is group activities with SharePlay. So imagine you're on a FaceTime call with a couple of people that you're kind of brainstorming on and you decide, you know what, I need to kind of, you know, write some things down. You want to make a mind note. So you open up notes, you share it to your friends, you're sharing, uh, you're sharing it through FaceTime. And while you guys are doing that, you're changing and altering things on the actual shared note. And now they're able to write on the whiteboard as well. I thought that was really cool. And that kind of opens up a lot of cool things because it's got API support. So imagine you on a FaceTime call with friends 
and you want to pay Monopoly, you can have the Monopoly app open up. Now you're on FaceTime. They're seeing the same game board you're seeing, and now you're able to play as if you're in the same room. I think it's going to open up a lot of great ideas for gaming, but also for business as well. So for the sixth hidden feature, we're going to speak about auto translation on device. So now with iPad OS 15 and iOS 15, you can maybe do auto translation as you're speaking on the device. You'll be able to download different languages. And when you're out of the country or when you need to speak to someone who maybe doesn't speak the same language that you speak, you'll be able to actually transcribe it live as they are talking. That is really cool. It's gonna open up so many possibilities to break down language barriers and maybe even open up doors for business. Who knows? And the seventh hidden feature I wanna speak about today is Siri request on device. So now instead of having to go out to the internet to just say set a timer or to change an alarm clock, to go to the next song, to play the next thing, all I have to do is ask Siri and the immediate fast response is crazy. Look at this quick demo here from Apple. Open photos. Open calendar. Turn on airplane mode. So as you can see, Siri is going to get a lot faster, do a lot more, and that on-device security of knowing that every request is asked, is computated on a device, is great for privacy and great for folks who may be afraid to use voice search. The last hidden feature I want to speak about today is the cool enhancements to FaceTime that go beyond just the SharePlay API. It now allows you to have portrait mode bokeh effects within your FaceTime calls. Now you do have to be on one of the latest iPads with A12 Bionic chip inside or at least up to the M1 like you know the new iPad Pro but if you have that device or that type of iPhone you'll be able to use portrait mode within your FaceTime calls so you're going to get that nice bokeh feel in the background you also have the opportunity to only isolate your voice on a FaceTime call so now if you're talking in a loud setting and you want to make sure the only voice that people hear is yours you now have that option right within FaceTime and that's going to really add a lot more depth to using FaceTime for more business centric things. So what do you guys think? Are you excited about any of these features that weren't technically announced at the keynote? Make sure you let me know down in the comments exactly what you like. Don't forget to like and share. Come on. This is the new thing. We got to do that, right? You got to share this content with more people. Subscribe because we got way more coming. Even this week, way more coming real soon. It's your boy Jay Dunn. Peace.